Hello friends, welcome again. Sumit this side. In this session, I will talk about 15 important big data terminologies. And this is the second session. If you have not viewed the first session in this, I would highly recommend that you see that because I have talked about 10 important terminologies. And in this session, I am going to talk about 15 additional terminologies. The link to the previous video I would provide in description so that you can have a look. So the first thing that I would like to talk about is what is a executor? What is a executor? Consider you have a four node cluster and each machine is of configuration, let's say 16 CPU cores and 64 GB RAM. I am drawing one machine here. Configuration is 16 CPU cores and 64 GB RAM. This is what the configuration is. Now inside this multiple containers are created, right? So we can let's say create three containers and each container we can give around let's say 5 CPU cores, 21 GB RAM, right? So that uh, total would be 15 CPU cores and 63 GB RAM we will use. One CPU core and one GB RAM will go for some background processes. So that's how we have divided the resources within one machine into three parts, right? And when we want, we can say that I want two executors of this much size and so on. So executor is like a logical unit within each node. This is for better utilization of resources. So you have understood what is a executor. Now let's talk about what is a transformation. So if you would have worked on Apache Spark, definitely you would know what is a transformation. Transformation is something which takes the data from one form and converts it to another form. That means from state A, it converts your data into state B, as simple as that, right? That means if you are doing a filter, that's a transformation. If you are doing a map, that's a transformation. If you are doing a group by, that's a transformation. Join, it's a transformation like that. Now, the third thing that I would like to talk about what is a DAG? DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graph, right? So that means when you put a bunch of transformations, a diagram kind of thing is created that, okay, first do a filter, then do a map, then do a group by and so on. That is what is a DAG. It's like a execution plan. Think it like a execution plan, right? That means first this transformation should happen, next this, next this and so on. Then in my list, the next keyword is what is an action? Action is when we say, I want the results now, please get me the results, right? So that means at this point, all the calculations start and you get the results, right? So let's say you have five transformations and then an action. As soon as you call action, everything starts happening one by one. So action is when you say, I want the results, for example, collect, show, all of these are actions. Even count, counting of, let's say, records is an action because it will give you instant results. The next in my list is lazy evaluation. What is lazy evaluation? We say Spark is lazy or transformations are lazy in Spark. Why lazy and what is lazy? Lazy means if I say do a filter, it won't happen that time. It will happen at some point later. If I say filter, only an entry to the execution plan or only an entry to a DAG is added, nothing else, right? So why Spark is lazy? See, if you are doing five transformations and if Spark is lazy, it gives special thing that basically reshuffle the transformation. That means if let's say you are doing a filter later, it can move it up, right? So that we eliminate not necessarily data at initial part only. So this is just one example, right? So why Spark is lazy? so that it can give you some extra optimizations around it. So this makes our life easy as a developer and we get some special benefits from Spark because Spark is lazy. So it gives us some optimizations. I hope this is clear. We have understood what is a transformation. So what is a narrow transformation, right? A narrow it's quite straightforward. Narrow transformations are the ones where there is no shuffling involved. For example, a filter. In filter, if one machine is doing filtering of data, is it dependent on any other machine? No, right? It can happen in isolation. 
So that's where there is no shuffling of data involved. So that is what a narrow transformation is. For example, a filter, a map, and so on. Next in our list is a white transformation. White transformation, as the name might, might suggest, here shuffling is involved. That means the data movement has to happen at some point of time. The, the work cannot happen in isolation altogether. So some work can happen in isolation, but after that, some shuffling of data or movement of data would be required. For example, when we do aggregations like group buys, joins and these kind of stuff. So these are white transformations and are little heavy transformations which takes time because shuffling is a costly operation and we want to avoid it whenever possible. Next in our list is partition skew. What is a partition skew? See partition is basically whenever we let's say do a join or a group by then same key would move in the same partition right now if one key is occurring more number of time than other then it will lead to a partition skew where one person has to handle more data than others consider let's say i have few one rupee coin few two rupee coin few five rupee coin and few ten rupee coin now five rupees coin are a lot more than one lakh coins other coins are let's say 100 200 something now i am saying let me give one rupee coin to this person two rupee coin to this person five rupee to this person and ten rupee coin to this person i ask them to find the total sum now tell me who will take the maximum time the person who is having this five rupee coin will take maximum time because those are more than one lakh coins we do not know how many right this person has to count but others have hardly 100 coins, they can do their work easily. So it's like we are overburdening the person who is handling 5 rupee coin. That's like a partition skew. Kind of this person can even choke and might not even tell you the answer. Right? So that's what a partition skew means. Giving work, more work to one person and giving less to others. Kind of this way. Next in our list is out of memory error. Out of memory error. This is a very commonly asked interview question also that what is out of memory error. So whenever there is a partition skew happen, that means one partition handling a lot of data which it is not capable to handle, then it can lead to out of memory error. That means if we are let's say doing some heavy processing in that particular partition, then it would require additional memory and it won't have it because already that partition is dumped with so much of data which it cannot handle right for example earlier when we talked about executor each executor had how much 21 gb ram right what if we give it a lot of data which it cannot handle right we give 50 gb there then of course it will lead to issues that's what is a partition skew and how it can lead to out of memory errors Next in our list is what is partitioning. Very simple. Let's say you have some employee data and you want to do some uh, searching on it based on let's say country. Then you might partition it logically based on country. Now what happens when you say select star from employee where country equal to this, then it will just have to see that folder because for each partition one folder will be created. If there are 50 countries, 50 different folders but when you say where country equal to this it will hit only that particular folder around right so that's where partition is a logical grouping of data and can really help in quick searching and all right whenever we are doing quick filtering of data it is very very crucial next in our list is bucketing bucketing also is somewhat like partitioning but instead of logically partitioning the data it is based on some hash value now let's say your major filtering is based on employee number or employee id now there are one lakh or millions of employees then how easy it is for you to create a partition on it it's not feasible because you do not want to create one million folders and scan folders right it won't work out partitioning works when there are less number of distinct values but when you have more distinct values then you should go with fixed number of buckets you might say i want 32 buckets right and for each bucket one file will be created instead of folders it is files right and internally it might based 
it might do it based on some hash function it can be based on remainder or something you do not have to worry but it's internal to the system what hash function it will use right so partitioning you should go when there are less number of distinct values bucketing you should go when there are a lot of distinct values and you can define a fixed number of bucket can be 16 bucket 32 bucket 8 bucket i'll ask you a question that how to determine how many buckets we should keep please answer this in the comment section next in our list is what is a broadcast join right you know join is a costly operation and required shuffling generally but there is a scenario when there is one small and one large table right two tables one small table one large table in this case we can avoid shuffling by broadcasting the small table to all executors that means every executor will have a copy of small table small table generally means less than 10 mb this configuration can be changed if we do that then while doing a join there will not be any shuffling involved and we know that whenever we can avoid shuffling at expense of anything that's a good thing because shuffling is a very costly operation so this avoids shuffling this cannot work when there are two big tables because you cannot broadcast a bigger table if there are two big tables ideally you should bucket both the tables and then it can give you some optimizations around next in our list what is a spark job so basically whenever you call an action one job is triggered so if you call three actions there will be three spark jobs in the most ideal scenario it can be little bit different because there are a lot of internal things but in the most ideal scenario if you fire two actions there will be two jobs next is what is stages in a spark job now once you see the spark job in a spark ui you will see stages ideally i would say whenever you call a white transformation like group by join a new stage is created so stages are marked by shuffle boundaries shuffle boundaries so stages are marked by shuffle boundaries if you have if you have two white transformations there will be three stages if you have five white transformation there will be six stages and so on so if you see a lot of stages that means you have a lot of white transformations and there is a lot of shuffling of data which is involved next in our list is what is a task task is the most granular unit in a spark job first we have a job then stages and then tasks or uh, let's say in a data frame there are eight partitions then there will be eight tasks which are corresponding to that right so task is at the very granular level right and there will be multiple tasks many of them would be running in parallel also so most granular thing in a spark job so with this we have completed 15 terminologies that you should know and this was the second video because in the first one i have covered 10 different terminologies and i would highly suggest you to check that as well you can find that link in the description i'm sure you would have found this video insightful do mention in comments what next video you want and i will try my best to bring that video for you if you have not yet subscribed to my channel make sure to subscribe now and hit on the notification icon so that you do not miss out on any necessary updates thank you all see you in next video